Morning guys. It's uh, just after 6 o'clock, September 1st, 2016. And what does my battery monitor say? 12.4. Yes. Alright, so the culprit to the battery's reading at 10.8 the other day, as I showed in the video, was due to a bad battery I found out. Happened to be this battery here. So, and how I found out is I had disconnected the connections and then I went inside and I checked the meter and the meter it shot from like 10.8 all the way up to 12.6, 12.9. So that indicated to me that this battery was bad. So I just took it into an O'Reilly's auto parts store and they tested it and it did test bad. So I just went ahead and, and swapped it out for another Group 27 deep cycle battery. $90 with a one-year warranty. So, and uh, the other thing that I also decided upon doing a little bit more research with batteries, at least for right now, is I'm going to stick with with uh, 12 volts for now. I'm not going to do the the six volt change out. Um, I guess for for just a few different reasons. Uh, doing a little bit more research and study. Uh, I learned that if you do the 6 volt swap and you have a cell that goes out in one of the batteries, then you're pretty much screwed. However, if you have a 12 volt system and a cell goes out, you can just revert to one battery. So in this example here, I had one battery that failed, so basically this battery was doing all of the charging and I still had power and I don't know how long I went without I guess realizing that this battery was faulty. I mean, this it could have been for a couple of months, uh, for all I know, because uh, I'm, you know, I'm still green, pretty green here when it comes to solar and batteries, and you know, I'm learning as I go. So, uh, so I am going to stick with the 12 volts for now. Um, I do like these 27s because they're easy to to come by. You can you can basically buy them anywhere. Another issue that with the six volt is the bat the battery leads. I would have to remove one of the either the positive or the negative, probably the positive, and bore a hole through the covers and run the positive lead to uh, you know one of the six volt batteries in here, and then and then as far as the wiring and everything, I'd have to make a few changes with that. So I'm just going to stick with a 12 volt system, and you know if I want to upgrade the the batteries to either uh, like I mentioned before going with an AGM or just the floodeds, you know. Uh, I think once I get a little smarter here with my batteries as far as maintaining them and and I think I'm going to be just fine. I mean, that's the big the big thing is, you know, you don't want to discharge them too low like men, like many of you had mentioned in the comment section. And so, you know, you just got to maintain them I and mean, I think you could you could be fine with any batteries as long as you take good care of them and you know, you know how to do that. So that's my story, and that's what I'm that's what I'm sticking to for right now. Um, you know, I got up this morning, and the batteries were reading at 12.4. When I went to bed last night, they were like 12.7. So not too not too bad of a drop. Um, yeah, so I think that's that was my whole problem is I had a bad battery in here, and that was like totally affecting the whole solar system. So. I know I was talking about getting more panels and all this, which I still may may do that. Um, but I'm just I'm still experimenting right now with with everything as far as what my needs are, and I really don't have too much, too much needs. I mean, I need I need enough power to keep both these batteries charged, and I need power to you know recharge things like my laptop and my phones, and you know just the basic essentials, which this system is you know more than enough as far as I'm concerned to do all of that. Um, I am probably going to be getting a like a, a upgrading my inverter that I have my little plug-in inverter and you know getting like a 400 watt plug-in inverter or something with maybe a fan and making a couple of other changes to the inside which I will be video logging all of this here as I go with if I make changes I like to uh, you know tell tell the story about what's going on so if there's other people out there that are considering doing this or they can kind of uh, either learn from some of my mistakes or my successes. You know, that to me is what, um, you know, these videos are about. And I do enjoy, uh, enjoy sharing, sharing it so that those of you can, you know, avoid some of the mistakes that I've made and, and uh, you know, go about your happy life and, and uh, you know, be uh, succeeding. So that's, uh, I think that's all I've got to say for right now on this topic today. Again, I want to thank you all very much for 
uh, commenting, giving me feedback. It's all much appreciated. As, uh, like I say, I am learning as I go here. And uh, the, the greatest thing about YouTube is you ask and you shall receive. You know, when you ask questions, direct questions on YouTube, such as this one here, you're going to get some pretty direct responses. Uh, so, oh, before I go, I do have one other thing that I wanted to ask you guys about here before I go that I found out yesterday. Okay, guys, so yesterday when I went to pull out one of the batteries, I went to turn my battery disconnect switch to the off position. It's now on. Now it's off. And my solar unit is still reading. So I have a faulty battery disconnect switch and I'm not really too sure about how to best go about diagnosing it other than just removing this cover, taking a multimeter and doing a little bit of testing which is probably the, the way to do it. I've got to do a little bit more research about as far as how to do that. I haven't uh, discovered any fuses or anything so I don't believe it's a, it's a bad fuse. So those of you that have uh, experienced this issue before or may be able to give me some advice and suggest some suggestions as far as diagnosing it, it would be much appreciated. Thanks again guys. Have an awesome day and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.